If y'all would turn with me today to the book of John, John chapter 14, and we're going to look at verses 15 through 21 today. John 14, 15 through 21. Have you ever wished that you could have walked with Jesus? That you could have heard him teach? That you could have seen him heal people? That you could have asked him questions as well? His disciples saw him. As John said in the opening chapter, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God the Son became a man. And certainly the disciples desired the presence of our Lord forever. But Jesus revealed that he was soon going to be departing. Here they were in the upper room after the Last Supper. And he said that he was going to be going away back to heaven to prepare a place for them. And that he was going, he had already told them multiple times he was going to the cross. That he was going to give his life as a ransom for many. And then three days later, we know that he was resurrected and the disciples saw him again. And then 40 days later, he ascended back to the Father, to heaven, to where the disciples too could go one day. Well, what's the way? How do you get to heaven? And Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, you know the Father, and you have seen the Father. Confused, Philip, the disciple, said, well, show us the Father. Show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. And through his answer, Jesus revealed an element of the great mystery that is the Trinity, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God in three persons. In this great mystery, he said, you have seen me, you have seen the Father. For I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. He's describing a union that is so close. One in essence, one in actions, one in will, one God in three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Father, He is not the Son. And the Father, He is not the Spirit. And the Son is not the Father. And the Son is not the Spirit. And the Spirit is not the Father. And the Spirit is not the Son. But the Father is fully God. The Son is fully God, and the Spirit is fully God. This is a great mystery. It is a great mystery to understand how God is three in one. But we can trust that He is who He says He is. He is the triune God who has created all things. He is the triune God who saves us. He is the triune God that we worship. And let us not forget the Holy Spirit. When I asked earlier, have you ever wished that you had walked with Jesus? I saw many heads nodded. Yes, we wish that Jesus was with us, walking along with us. Well, let us not forget the Holy Spirit. For you may desire Jesus' presence, like the disciples. What do you realize is the Holy Spirit is God with us. God who walks with us and talks with us. Church, we are not alone. For God himself dwells within every believer. John 14, 15 through 21. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live. You will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father. And you and me, and I and you. He who has my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me. 
And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the great promises of the Holy Spirit that was predicted through Ezekiel long ago. That Jesus promised to the disciples in the upper room. And that descended upon the disciples in Jerusalem at Pentecost. And then among the Samaritans. And then among the Gentiles. And as we stand today, Lord, all those who call on the name of the Lord. That the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. Making us into a new creation. With a new heart. The Holy Spirit who convicts us of sin. Who draws us to the cross. To Christ who died for our sins. And as we accept Jesus that we are regenerated. We are baptized. We are made new. Born again by the Holy Spirit. And it is only through Christ that we come to the Father. I thank you for the great mystery of the Trinity. That has been revealed to us Lord. And that we can trust you. That you are who you say you are, Lord. Help us to see today how you work, how you save, how you create a new heart, and help us to worship you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The departure of the sun was coming very soon. And in verse 15 and verse 21 as well, we see a theme that Jesus repeats actually throughout John. If you love me, Keep my commandments. A Christian, the name Christian is saying that you're following Christ. And followers of God obviously follow God. We follow God out of love. Love for God with all of our heart, our soul, and our mind. And we see that Jesus is a perfect example. Perfectly obeying the Father in all things and in love. The Christian life is a call to love God with our, all our heart, soul, and mind. The Christian life is a call to obedience. If you love me, keep my commandments. The Christian life is a call to holiness. The Christian life is unsatisfied with sin. The Christian life seeks to please Jesus. And the Christian life is characterized by taking up our cross and following him. Self-sacrifice. So obedience shows that we love Christ. What does disobedience reveal? It reveals a heart that does not love God. That is not following God. The good fruit in our lives that we produce as we obey Him, as we follow Him, really shows evidence of a heart that is turned towards God. He tells the disciples, if you love me, keep my commandments. And for the disciples, a new day was soon coming. A new day of rebirth. A new day of a new heart. A new day of God's indwelling presence. In the book of Jeremiah, God said, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Looking forward to the new covenant. How is it that God is going to put his law in our minds and write it on our hearts? But through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. In verse 16, we see Jesus foreshadowing this coming new covenant. Verse 16, he says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. This new covenant that was coming. This new agreement with God. This new relationship with God. We see first that Jesus is interceding for those who love him. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will intercede for you. And he prays to the Father. Now don't miss this point. As you look through the Gospels, you see Jesus praying. Does Jesus pray to himself? He doesn't. He prays to the Father. He is interceding for us. And as he prays to the Father, he prays for another helper. Another helper. See, Jesus has been the helper. Walking with the disciples. Healing, teaching them. Now he prays for another helper. Pay attention to that word, another. Another. That means one of the same substance. 
are the same essence of Jesus. Which means this helper must be fully God. This word for helper also means advocate. It also means comforter, counselor. This helper who comes alongside and helps. Who is this that Jesus prays for? But the Holy Spirit. God the Spirit, who is eternal. The Spirit has always existed. The Spirit is uncreated God. And the Spirit is referenced over a hundred times in the Old Testament. But it was different in the Old Testament. As we read, often the Spirit is anointing the prophets or anointing the kings. The Spirit inspires the word that we have, the Old Testament. All scripture is written by inspiration of God or God breathed. So a hundred times throughout the Old Testament, we see the Spirit of God referenced. Then when we get to the New Testament, we find the Spirit referenced over 250 times. Now, this shouldn't be surprising, for today we live in the age of the Spirit. The age of the Spirit that was foretold by the prophet Ezekiel. God said, I will put my Spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. How is it that God puts His Spirit within us? It's the Holy Spirit who comes into our heart. This is how we are born again. And when we are born again, we are spiritually enabled to keep his commands. Listen to that verse from Ezekiel again. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he's sending us a helper to help us keep his commandments. As the Holy Spirit writes the law in our hearts. And this helper who is coming to the disciples. He said that he will abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit. God himself will live within Christians forever. Let us not miss the eternal nature of that residency. That the Holy Spirit comes to dwell, take up home within us. He is not coming and going. As some other brothers and sisters of Christ may believe that the Holy Spirit, you either have Him one day and you don't the next. That is not Scripture. For the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. Now we may receive a special empowering or feeling at times, but the Holy Spirit is permanently in every believer. He has sealed us for the day of redemption. Paul says in Romans that if you do not have the Spirit, you are not God's child. You do not belong to Him. Ah, but the Holy Spirit that, God, that Jesus has prayed would come, the Spirit of truth, in verse 17. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. The spirit of truth. Let's think about the father. God the father is truth. God the father cannot lie. And Jesus says your word is truth. And Jesus says I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. So what does the spirit of truth do? But he draws us to truth. He draws us to Jesus Christ who takes us to the Father. He teaches us truth as we understand more about God's Word and who God is. And He guides us in truth that we are able to obey the commands of our Lord, the Spirit of truth. He is without sin. He is naturally good. He is perfect. And He is the Holy Spirit because He is perfect. Because He is God. And this Spirit of truth, He is not a force, but He is a personal being. Look in verse 17 as Jesus refers to Him. He says, The Spirit of truth, truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him, for He dwells within you, with you, and will be in you. He. Him. He is a personal being. 
The Holy Spirit has feelings, reasoning, actions, responses. You know, you can grieve the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit responds to the way that we are living our lives. He is a personal being in a personal relationship with every believer. It is God who walks and talks with us. It is God who will never leave nor forsake us. Now, Jesus says the world, referring to the lost, those that are opposed to Christ, he says they cannot receive the Holy Spirit for they don't see him. They don't know him. And the truth is they deny him. You see, the Holy Spirit invites people to him. He invites them to know him, to know Christ. But many ignore the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Many ignore the truth. But Jesus says to his, his followers, Christians, you see his work. You know his power. Can you say that? Have you seen the Holy Spirit working in your life, in the lives of others? Have you felt his power and his presence? And now Jesus gives a promise to the disciples in this upper room. He says that he dwells with you. Oh, yes, the Holy Spirit has always dwelled with believers, always existing, always dwelling with believers. But something new is coming for the disciples. He says he will be in you. You see, the disciples will be the temple of God. Christians today, we are the temple of God. For the time has come. Look at Acts chapter 2. At Pentecost. You see, Jesus, after he ascended back to heaven, he told the disciples. He said, wait in Jerusalem for the Spirit to come. For the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we see a radical change in these disciples who had been very fearful. After Jesus had been arrested, after he had been crucified, and the Holy Spirit fell upon them, and they were speaking with tongues of fire, and people could understand the gospel in their own language. And these Jews that were gathered in Jerusalem were cut to the heart by the Holy Spirit. And many were saved that day. And as Peter, the one who had denied Christ three times, who had fled at his arrest, Peter stood boldly in Jerusalem and preached to the people. And they were saved. The Holy Spirit moved upon the Jewish people. And as you go through the book of Acts, you see that he comes upon the Samaritans. Something new is happening. You see, he's accepted the Jews. They're not surprised about that. But these Samaritans, they're, they're half Jew. Half Jew, half Gentile. And the Jews didn't want anything to do with them. But God came to them. The Holy Spirit fell upon them. Proving that God was coming to all people. And as you go further into the book of Acts, the Gentiles, those that were not Jewish at all, the Holy Spirit falls upon them and they are saved and God dwells with them. And the Holy Spirit now works among believers and lives within every believer. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about being dunked in water. I'm talking about being regenerated. Born again, receiving a new heart, a new heart that follows God, that loves God, a new heart that is sealed for the day of redemption. You see, the Holy Spirit is our down payment for what the future holds for us to be completely free of sin, to be glorified. And the Holy Spirit who lives within us enables us to live a life of obedience. Now, this is true of every believer. In Romans, Paul writes, So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So first, if you're not in the Spirit, if you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. But he goes on, But you, you Christians, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. But then he says, If, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, Oh, yes, there's some that are professing Christ, but have not been born again. There's some who have not accepted him. And he goes on. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Do you understand that every believer has the Holy Spirit? And if Christ is in you, 
The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I want you to note the closeness of the Godhead, of the Trinity in those verses. He says that if indeed the spirit of God, the father dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of who? Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. You see, to have the Spirit is to have Christ. It is to have the Father. It is to have the Godhead as a whole. But the Holy Spirit in particular regenerates us, dwells within us. And Paul says, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You see, when you're born again, it is the Holy Spirit who gives us assurance of our salvation. It is the Holy Spirit who convicts us of sin, who allow, does not allow us to be satisfied with sin in our life. It is the Holy Spirit who reminds us of the promises of God. It is the Holy Spirit who we feel His presence, His comfort as He walks with us and talks with us. In verse 18, Jesus tells the disciples, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. He's about to go to the cross. To die a substitutional death. And he's going to be resurrected. And then he ascends back to heaven. All the disciples, they had walked with him. They wanted Jesus to stay with him, certainly. But he says, I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave you alone. He says later in John, he says, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Now, as Jesus walked the earth, he was in a very specific place at a very specific time with very specific people. This is Jesus as he walked the earth. But what happened when he went back to heaven? It's the Holy Spirit, God's presence, came to walk and talk with every believer no matter where you are, no matter what time it is, no matter who you are. If you are a believer in Christ, God is with you. This promise of Jesus, I will come to you. And one way is by the Holy Spirit. It is God's presence with every believer. Jesus departed. The Holy Spirit came. And this is how Jesus fulfills his promise to always be with the disciples. Do you remember the Great Commission? Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name, take that singular, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. There's that, well, if you love me, keep my commandments again. Teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. How is it that Jesus is with us? It is by the Holy Spirit. It is by the Holy Spirit that God will never leave us nor forsake us. He is always with us. He says, I will come to you. Another way that he came to the disciples is at the resurrection. Verse 19. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. What a powerful verse. Because I live, you will live also. At the resurrection, he appeared to the disciples he appeared to those women followers as well. He appeared to 500 followers at once. And lastly, he appeared to Paul. He says the world, the world didn't see him anymore. He had walked among the world, but now he came to his own. And he tells him, because I live, you will live also. What a great promise. Do you realize what the resurrection is? It's a promise to every believer that there is life after death. There's a promise that we will be resurrected as our spirit dwells with God when we die. And one day our bodies will be made new and be reunited with our souls, every believer. And this promise of the resurrection is fulfilled through the Holy Spirit. In Romans, Paul says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Do you see the work of the Trinity in salvation? In new creation? In resurrection? In verse 20, He says, At that day, 
You will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. At the day of the resurrection, they would know that Jesus is fully God as He said that He is in the Father. And at that ascension back to heaven, the angels tell the disciples He's coming back the same way that He went up. They know that Jesus is fully God. And at Pentecost, as the Holy Spirit fell upon them, they knew that Jesus is fully God. He is back in heaven. He has sent the Helper as He has promised. And now every believer... All those that confess Jesus Christ, that turn to Him in repentance for salvation, they are united to Christ. And we are in Christ, and Christ is in you by the Holy Spirit. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body. Again, that's not talking about immersion, water, baptism. Being baptized by the Holy Spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or frees, no matter who you are, if you turn to Christ for salvation, you are baptized into one body by the Spirit. And we have all been made to drink into one Spirit. How is it that you join this body of Christ? But it is by grace through faith. It is trusting that He is who He says He is and that He is a rewarder, rewarder of those who turn to Him. Who trust Him. It is by grace through faith. And this is all accomplished through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who convicts us of sin. The Holy Spirit who draws us to Jesus Christ for salvation. Jesus Christ takes us to the Father through His sacrifice. For we are made holy by the cross. By what Jesus has done. Forgiven of our sins. So at repentance... At accepting Jesus as your Savior, you are born again by the Holy Spirit. You are regenerated and you join the body of Christ. We are a blood-bought people regenerated by the Holy Spirit. We are born again. But you're only saved by the triune God. That is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we know in John 3, 16, for God the Father so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, that's Jesus, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we are drawn to Christ by the Holy Spirit. We are regenerated by the Holy Spirit. Do not fear the complexity, the mystery of the triune God, for it is only through Him that you will find eternal life. It is only through Him that you will find forgiveness of sins. It is only through Him that you will receive a new heart. In verse 21, he repeats it. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love the Son, you'll be loved by the Father. And the Son will reveal Himself to us. That is through the Holy Spirit, who always glorifies Christ. The Holy Spirit... Who wrote all scripture. See holy men were moved by the spirit to write scripture. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine. Reproof, correction, instructions and in righteousness. That the man or woman of God may be made complete. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now this same Holy Spirit who wrote the scriptures. Dwells within us and illuminates his word. We understand his commandments that are written upon our heart. And he equips us to obey. The evidence of being born again. Is loving Christ. It is obedience to Christ. Obedience to his commands. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Christian. You have the power to overcome whatever is before you. You have the power to overcome because that power lives within you. God himself is with you. God himself will give you wisdom. He will give you discernment. He will give you guidance. He will give you the ability to obey. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But do you realize that without faith, it is impossible to be born again? You must trust Jesus for salvation to be born again. And then as the Holy Spirit regenerates you, you are spiritually enabled to obey His commands. But you must submit to Him. You're spiritually enabled and the Spirit dwells within you. 
Now, Paul says, walk in the spirit, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let us love, worship and obey the triune God. It is a great mystery of how God is three in one. But we can trust that he is who he says he is. The triune God who created all things. The triune God who saves us. The triune God who we worship. And as you know him better, you will find great comfort. You will find peace. And you will find joy. In Christ, you are never alone. For the Holy Spirit lives within every believer. Helping us. Comforting us. Teaching us. And I ask you, do you feel His presence today? What does the Spirit say to you today? In our time of commitment today, I want you to consider how God wants you to respond. Perhaps He is calling you to repentance. Coming to Christ for salvation. Perhaps He's calling you to repentance to rededicate your life. Perhaps He's calling you to join this church body. Whatever Christ is calling you to, listen to the Spirit and respond to Him. I encourage you this week as you spend time in devotions, read the 8th chapter of Romans. That's what I quoted from much today. Romans chapter 8 will be a great blessing to you as you seek God this week. But let us close with the word of prayer. Father, I thank you for your great blessings upon us, your great love for us, that you sent your Son to die on the cross for our sins, that you have sent your Spirit to dwell in us, that we may be born again, that we may be saved, regenerated, and empowered to live a life of obedience to you. I pray that you just bless your congregation, your blood-bought people, Lord, that you would help them to feel your presence, that you would give them comfort, that you would give them direction, that you bring them conviction as well, Lord, as they read your word, as they study, as they pray, as they seek you. And just bless them, Lord. And help us to be obedient to you in all things. And that includes the Great Commission to go and tell others the good news that we can be saved through Jesus Christ. And to tell others to obey all that you have commanded us. And I thank you that you are with us always even into the end of the age. Bless us as we walk with you this week and help us to feel your presence. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen.